a rebuilt Stuart Major beam engine and the workshop. Part 3, a closer look at the beam. Remachining the casting to correct some serious errors and fit a bronze bush. And a long groove screw to hold the main shaft in position. The more I look at this engine, the more work I think there is to do. What I'm doing here is replacing the bearing caps and the reason for replacing the bearing caps is just so I don't lose any of the parts. There are problems with this main beam on the engine and as it's the most important part of the engine I will be refitting it and having a look and taking it off again that's why I'm replacing the bearing parts. So here's the beam on the bench and as you can clearly see the holes in the beam are not in the centre of the cast bosses. Now the front two where the ruler is and not too bad they're covered by the watts parallel motion linkages but there's nothing to cover up the other hole which is the water pump drive with the beam tightly clamped in the machine vise on the milling machine I'm using an end mill to centralize the hole so now the hole is going through the center of the boss and the boss is perfectly flat on the milling machine with a perfectly machined hole in the center of the boss on the beam it's time now to make a bush to fit this hole I'm making this bush from a piece of phosphor bronze. This is a free cutting type of phosphor bronze. And when I get nearly there, I'm taking a test cut. No, that's too small. I'll take another test cut and try the beam on that one. No, that's too tight. And a third test cut, that's dead right. I do not want this to be an interference fit. If it's an interference fit, which is a tight fit, I'll have to press it into the beam. And what will happen then is the hole in the bush will get smaller because it's been compressed by the beam and I'll have to run a reamer through by hand. So I'm doing this all in one process. Centre drill first, then open up the hole using a drill that is one imperial size less than the hole that I finally want. I then use a 3 8 of an inch reamer to finally size the hole and the existing pin fits perfectly. And I'm patting it off slightly oversize. Once it's patted off I can then turn it round in the chuck and cut it to the finished size. I made a plug gauge by putting a piece of brass in the existing hole in the beam and making a mark on it which gives me the length I need for the bush. And then I fit the bush to the beam using some Loctite 603 as usual. This bush is not a tight fit or a slack fit in the hole. It has to be just the right kind of a fit. It's a gentle push fit I would describe it as. I'm rotating it here to make sure it's covered in Loctite 603 and I'm going to tap it with a hammer, but very, very gently, to make sure it's level with the outer edge of the cast iron. Once I hold the original pin fitting in place, you can see now it is at least in the middle of the beam. In this clip I have the beam securely mounted in the milling machine, and I'm milling off the excess part of the casting to match the part that's been milled off at the other side. All will be revealed when I put the engine back together. I don't know why the bosses are not in the same place on either side of the beam. I am assuming these are proper Stuart castings. But maybe not, I don't know where the engine came from in the first place. The cast iron itself seems to be fairly good quality. Here I'm just using a needle file and an emery block to tidy up the piece I've just machined. Before I forget, I'd just like to mention that a while back in one of the previous episodes, I used some heat to heat up this centre pin and destroy the bond of the Loctite allowing me to move the pin into the correct position. Originally there was also an Allen grub screw in this hole. I'm now replacing it. I've ground it to the right length so it doesn't protrude from the beam, and now the centre pin's well held in position. All I need to do now is scrape off some of this oil residue from underneath the beam. I'm going to immerse all these parts in cellulose thinners anyway, before painting the engine, but it makes it easier if I remove the thick of the stuff before I do that. And finally I'm giving the beam a good rub with some sandpaper. This beam should come up quite nicely once it's all done. That's it for now. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.